I've been growing canola for seven years. For five years? Seven years. 30 years. This is our third harvest in a row. Uh, seven years now. So soil health refers to the um, soil's capacity to uh, function as a vital living ecosystem to sustain uh, plants, animals, and humans. I've been growing both dryland and irrigated canola for seven years. I really like it from the standpoint that it's a deep-rooted crop. Uh, we were having a lot of runoff, having a lot of trouble keeping the moisture on the field until we put canola in the rotation. That changed everything. And now we don't, we can put an inch of water on and it all sucks right into the profile. And uh, one of the main reasons is a rotational crop because we're just weed on weed on weed on weed. I dug up a plant earlier this spring. This stuff was probably only this tall and that root was, you know, about that deep already. It's good for the ground, it's good for the wheat. You know, it's good for your other crops. It just works really well for me, and I, most folks seem to be happy once they've gotten into it. The brassica roots exude a compound that solubilizes phosphorus from deeper levels and brings it up and leaves it at the surface. I've gone from about 12 parts per million to about 28 parts per million in my soil tests. Because of the canola in the rotation, I can pull a full six-foot profile by hand most everywhere here. Canola is definitely part of, um, kind of fits within one of those principles of soil health that usually we talk about, which is things like armoring the soil with residue, reducing the tillage or the amount of soil disturbance, um, putting living roots in the ground as long as possible, and then that last part is diversity. So canola is, especially when we're talking about in our area, wheat being the predominant crop or wheat and, and a pulse, having another kind of crop type in there with a different root structure um, adds more diversity to the soil and is part of that soil health management system. It's a good flex crop for us. I mean, it, it allows us flexibility. After canola, you can pretty much raise any crop. So we raise a lot of winter wheat after canola, but you can also go and put a legume in or a spring grain if you need it. So um, that's been a huge benefit for us. The ground is a lot mellower to work with afterwards, and it just, I think it gives us more flexibility. Canola roots can be very deep, especially in winter canola and in drier years. This past year here, though, we had timely rains which kept the taproot from having to dig very deep. Because of canola, because canola has these large taproots comparing with other crops, the large taproots create a large pores in the soil, which is beneficial for water infiltration. Therefore, you get more water storage and less uh, erosion of soils. So it is capable um, to bring the nutrients in deep soil uh, that's left behind by wheat um, up to the surface soils. And then when the uh, residue breaks down, the nutrients uh, get released to the soil and that nutrients become available for the falling crops. We've noticed that our ground is a lot mellower. We don't get the uh, soil cracking on the ridges when it dries out later in the year. And it seems like we get a better filtration with our moisture with the big taproot. We generally go back with a winter wheat crop on our canola, direct seed into it. It always seems like we have a lot more even stand throughout the field after a canola than like some of our other rotational crops. And we've generally seen a bump in uh, yield as well. I think that what I really like about canola, number one, is, is that the residue. When you, you get done harvesting, there can be a mat of four inches of this mat of, of canola leaves and stalks. And it's amazing how it breaks down over time. It's not like, it's not like the winter wheat where you have all the cellulose and lignin and it's tough and it's ornery. It doesn't seem to hold much nutrition in a, in a wheat plant, dry wheat plant stock. But in canola, it seems by six or eight months after you harvest it, next spring, it, it seems to almost all disappear. It's a remarkable thing. Uh, we started farming canola five or six years ago or something like that. It's just been a slam dunk on that for us, so. If you're going into a wheat crop after canola with no soil applied herbicide, it's fresh and it's had plenty of time for any of that soil applied herbicide to work its way out and that wheat has nothing to fight against. But usually the stand of wheat after following canola is, uh, is quite a bit better. 
We've been doing canola for several years now. Uh, main things we've noticed, years and years of the same equipment tilling over the ground, we've created, created that hard pan layer um, and the canola has been able to break the hard pan. We are seeing higher yields and we're seeing less herbicides being used later on because we, with the crop rotation, with the canola, we were able to spray those broadleafs and clean up the grassy weeds. Canola fits really well into NRCS programs. A lot of our stuff like CSP is geared towards uh, incentivizing crop rotations and um, just doing something different out on the farm. When we go to producers and we say, you know, one of the things that you can do in our programs is crop rotation, they say, well, what else can I grow out here? Well, we like to bring up canola because of the soil health benefits that you get, but there's also real economic benefits to canola. It can be on par with what kind of returns you get from growing wheat. So not only is it economical for the producers, it is also provides just a lot of long-term benefits. The decrease in soil compaction, the increase in water infiltration, and just breaking up those pest cycles, both above ground, what you see in your grassy weeds and things like that, but below ground. By growing a different crop, it just breaks up that pest cycle. And so that's why you see the increased yields in wheat and the increased water infiltration. I mean, that really helps with wheat yields the following year. We started granola, growing canola again about nine years ago. We got into it because we were not seeing the same grass control in our winter wheat that we were liking. We were looking for other options and canola seemed like a good thing to try. And so we planted some and had pretty good success the first year. Slowly gotten better at it to the point where we feel like it's a necessary part of what we're trying to do. To have a little bit of it in there every year. Our canola crops have increased our filtration rates. We get pretty heavy rain events the last few years. Uh, most of that water goes in. Unless it's a really bad thunderstorm, it runs down the road a little bit. But in the fields, we don't have any hardly any erosion anymore. We don't have any wind erosion. If our ground isn't frozen uh, after the snow cover, comes off, then most of that snow melts into the ground. Um, so we capture almost all of that. We have increased organic matter. Microbial activity is, is, is definitely increased. Um, our soils are a lot softer than they used to be. We're not having to seed as deep anymore because um, we're capturing that moisture. Those softer soils are allowing that moisture to stay closer to the surface. One of the tenets of soil health is crop rotation. And as you look around here, you can see that we don't get a lot of rain. And so to try to find something that would replace wheat was becoming very difficult, but obviously very needed. And canola seemed to fit that, that mold. This ground has seen wheat probably for anywhere from 80 to 100 years. And so just to give it some variety, uh, canola is a very deep rooting crop. And so we're finally breaking some compaction and then just eliminating some of the disease or breaking some of the disease cycles that wheat uh, wheat brought had and was here because we kept growing wheat on wheat on wheat. The research and the breeding and everything has come so far and it's interesting. This is in North Douglas County how we can become known for something but we're kind of becoming known for our ability to grow canola and a lot of that's the advent of the Pacific Northwest Canola Association and, and what they're bringing as far as resources, governmental resources, private industry resources to help us grow a better crop. It's nothing for us to see five to ten bushel better wheat following canola. We raised canola partly to help control some of the grassy weeds that we have, feral rye, goat grass, peat grass, but I also always had in mind we needed something else besides wheat to raise. It was only after I started raising canola that I figured out that the subsequent wheat crops were a lot better following canola, it changed the tilt of the soil immediately. This is very rocky country we farm, so we've never been able to go in here with subsoilers or anything like that because then you'd spend the next two years just picking up the rocks that it pulled up. The thing about canola is it's got a deep root, and I think the first few times you'd raise canola on a place, the canola roots would go down about eight inches and hit a tillage pan and start growing sideways. Now they just go straight down and it's like a big old carrot about two feet long sticking straight into the ground. It works like a straw in the winter. Even with our gr grounds frozen, we will, on our soil tests, have an average of an inch more moisture in the ground in the spring than we do with the wheat stubble. On our farm, on the fifth generation, we've some of the same farm ground 
since before statehood. I've got my son that loves everything farming and obviously I'd love to pass along, you know, this farm to him if it's possible and we've got to take care of the soils to do that and I think that, you know, rotating crops is, is definitely a good way to, to try and, you know, achieve sustainability. So one of the things that we think about uh, when we think about our soil health around here is just mainly keeping our soil. When we grow canola, it uh, takes out some of our tillage operations so we don't have as bad of erosion. Uh, we don't do any tillage in the fall and we minimize our tillage in the spring. And uh, when we do do our tillage, it's uh, one operation of vertical tillage and then one operation of fertilizer. Well, I, I kind of define soil health more by what it does and what it is. What it does is it creates soil that's resilient, productive over the long term. And the canola is very useful in that regard because it allows us to uh, control our weeds in, in ways that we can't do with simply a cereal rotation. It breaks that disease cycle within the soil from growing cereals year after year after year. You know, and it does other beneficial things like uh, helps out with compaction. Um, we've been no-till since 1999. Prevents us from having to do something a lot more drastic, like coming in with a tillage tool. The benefits have been very clear. Being a, can a canola grower has actually made me a better wheat grower because it is a more intensive management crop. You, know, you can't do the same thing for forever and expect it always to work. You know, we're in a changing environment and either you adapt or you get left behind.